So with our Tinder app, we're going to create a Facebook login system. This is a really powerful way of allowing people to log into your apps without having to enter any username, password, or anything like that. You've probably seen something similar if you've logged into websites or apps. It simply redirects the user either to the Facebook app if they've got it installed or to Safari and allows them to log in via their Facebook account. This can also allow you to get extra information about your users through what they've got stored on Facebook and even get information about their friends, etc. as well. So there's a lot you can do with this. It's not straightforward, I have to say. There's quite a few fiddly settings that we're going to need to change, but don't panic. I'll guide you through every step. And by the end of this video, we should have a working Facebook login app. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna start off in Pass and create a new app. So just click on the link at the top there. This is a new Tinder app for me, so I'm gonna call it Tinder 2. You can just call it Tinder if you like. And then as before, we're gonna jump over to Quick Start, Data, Mobile, iOS, Swift, New Project. Now again, at the time of recording, Pass wasn't working with Swift 2 and Xcode 7, so I'd recommend just searching for Rob Percival Swift Pass. And that top result on Google there is what you want. And here we can download a working version of Pass for Xcode 7 and Swift 2. Once Pass is working, I'll update this page to let you know that you don't need to use my version here. Okay, then we'll open that up in the usual way and jump over to the desktop, there it is. So I'm just gonna rename the folder Tinder and then open it up in Xcode. And the one thing we need to do to make it work with Pass is to change the application ID and client key exactly like we did in the Instagram app. So there we go. Now we should just be able to run that and find that it stores an item of data in our online data store. So let's go back over to pass and click core so that we can see that. Let's have a look. You can just see at the bottom there, it says object has been saved, so that, that looks promising. Let's just check, yep, there we go. We've got our user and we've got our test object. Brilliant, so we've got our app set up with Pass and we're ready to go with that. Now it's time to integrate Facebook. So I'm going to jump over to developers.facebook.com and you should log in here with your Facebook account. You can either use a different one like I do, or you can use your standard Facebook account, completely up to you. If you don't have a Facebook account, then just click sign up there and it's all pretty straightforward. If you're really serious about doing stuff with Facebook in your apps, be worth having a read of the documentation there that tells you what is possible with the Facebook SDK. And there's, there really is a lot you can do, a lot beyond what we're going to look at, which is just logging in with Facebook. But whatever you're doing, it starts with this same setup process. So let's scroll down to the bottom where it says iOS SDK. SDK is short for Software Development Kit, and this is everything that we need to get going with Facebook on iOS. So download the latest version. It's 4.4 for me. But you should get whatever the latest version is. And I'm just going to save that to the desktop. And then there it is. So double click on that and this will install the Facebook SDK on your machine. So just go through the process. You don't need to select any options at all. There we go. So that's installed fine. It actually gives you instructions to integrate it into your app, but you don't need those because you'll be following along. What that actually does is it installs a Facebook SDK folder in your documents folder, which contains 
all of the different frameworks that you need and also some samples. So if you want to go further with this then you probably want to start with the Scrumptious app there but there's a lot more there that you can do so sharing examples and the audience network as well. So there's a lot of stuff to, you can work with in that folder and to bring it into your app all you need to do is I'm just going to get the frameworks folder open there. So we need the core kit which you need for any Facebook SDK work and we need the login kit because we're obviously using Facebook login here. So just drag those in. It doesn't actually matter where you drag them to but in, within the frameworks makes sense. Now I would recommend when you're dragging them to deselect the copy items if needed. That means that it will always get the framework from your documents folder which means that when you update the SDK on your machine that will update it for all your apps as well. So that's what's the recommended behavior but I will actually copy the items in myself and that's so that when you run the demo app on your machine it won't start looking in my documents folder for the Facebook frameworks because obviously it won't find them on your machine. So I'm going to select that but I would recommend that you don't. Having said that it will work either way. Okay so those frameworks are now in. One quick thing to do if you didn't check the box as I recommended is to have a quick look in build settings so click on your project and then build settings and then search for search paths and you can hear, see here we've got framework search paths so there it's got your app as a search path you should have the Facebook SDK folder as a search path as well when you bring in the framework and don't copy it in it should add that in as a framework but if it doesn't I'd recommend adding it in yourself so just double click on the search path click plus and then we want slash users and then your username so I'm going to put Rob Percival you put whatever your Mac username is it will be the same as whatever's there if you're on your desktop and then documents and the same folder name here so Facebook SDK and that will just make sure that your app can find all of the necessary framework documents Another necessary stage is to go into supporting files and click on the pass starter project bridging header. So a bridging header is a file which allows you to bring in objective C code into your Swift app and we need that to integrate the pass Facebook utilities and also the Facebook core kit utilities as well. So I'm going to uncomment that and then I'm going to add the Facebook core kit framework as well so it's FB SDK core kit so just exactly the same as what's there slash FB SDK core kit dot H there we go and one slight alteration that we need here is that this default version of the pass Facebook utilities doesn't work with version 4 of the Facebook SDK which is what we're working with here the latest version so you need to switch to version 4 and you can do that by finding your app folder so for us it's tinder and then within there looking for pass Facebook utils version 4 and that's what we want so I'm going to drag that in into frameworks now it's already in your app that's where we found it so we don't need to copy it and if you try and copy it then you'll get an error because it's already there so just click finish there and I would recommend removing the past Facebook utils framework so there's not any confusion there that we're all in version 4 and then while we're here we're going to update that to have a v4 on the end so that makes sure we're importing the right version of the pass Facebook utilities 
All right, so far so good. Now it's back over to Facebook again, and we're gonna set up our app. So you can see I've got my old Tinder app there. I'm going to add a new app for my new Tinder app. So that's iOS. And I'm just gonna call it Tinder 2. You can of course call it whatever you like. So this is not a test version of another app. Category, I'll go for communication. And then let's create our app ID. Excellent, so that's done. Download the SDK, we've already done that bit. So that's good. The next bit is configuring our info.plist. We've already played with our plist a little bit. Um, we've put in some values there that allowed us to use location and various other features. So this is where we put our information about our Facebook app. So we're just gonna follow the instructions right here. So we're gonna create a key called Facebook app ID and I'd copy and paste them because if you get them at all wrong, then everything will fall apart. So I just control clicked and add row, paste the name in there. This is a string and it has a string of your app ID. So obviously don't use mine, use whatever yours is. All right, so now we've got our app ID integrated into our info.plist. Now we need our Facebook display name. So this is just the name of the app. So Tinder2. There we go. And now we need a key called URL types with an array as a type and a dictionary as a only child. And then we're gonna create an array within that called URL schemes. So what this does is it allows other apps to open our app from within them. So if you can imagine, we're gonna jump over to the Facebook app to verify our login, and then that has to have a way of loading our app back up again. And this is the first thing that we need to put into our app to allow that to happen. There's a few other bits and bobs that we'll need as well. So URL types, this is actually one of the default ones, so it will auto predict this one for us. So there we go, URL types, and then it will automatically have a dictionary within it. And then that will already have a value called URL identifier. If it doesn't for you, then just add it, but it should have one there automatically. And we're gonna replace that with URL schemes and replace that Sorry, and we're going to give that a value of FP. Da, 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 da. So you could think of this a bit like the HTTP at the beginning of a web address. HTTP means that we want to get something off the web. And if an address begins with this FB and then all those numbers, then it will load up my particular app within the phone. So that's really useful. While we're here in info.plist, there's one more line that we need which is new to Xcode 7 and Swift 2 and that is whoops I don't want to add it there let's close that and add another one there so this is and you have to get it exactly right ls application queries schemes and this does exactly what we did here it allows other apps to open up our app. And this is an array. We can have a number of different options here if we want, but we only need one. And that is gonna have a value of FB auth. So once again, that allows the Facebook authentication process to then pass on and load our app when it's done. Great, so we're getting there. Now it's time to write some code. So we're gonna start off in appdelegate.swift and this is where we'll set up the process to initialize Facebook within our app. And we do that using PF Facebook utils. 
And I don't know if this is of use to you, but I found that it didn't get the auto predict going until I ran the app and then stopped it. So you might want to try that just to make life easier for yourself. And then we want initialize Facebook app, or sorry, initialize Facebook with application launch options. And the launch options are just a variable provided by the did finish launching with options method. So we pop those in there. Great. The second change that we need to make is instead of returning true at the end of the did finish launching with options method, we return some information about the Facebook login. And we get that from FB SDK application delegate dot shared instance. I'm not getting any auto predict here. So you either need to type this or you can just copy and paste it from my demo project if you like. Doesn't matter too much here. So dot application and then application did finish launching with options and the options are launch options. There we go. So that once again gives a bit of information about whether the Facebook login was successful or not. Finally, at least within the app delegate file, there's a method for S Facebook SDK integration here. I found that that method doesn't work at all on Xcode 7. If you're using an updated version of pass, it might work for you. But I've found that two other methods are needed. And I'm just going to paste them right in there. There's nothing particularly interesting about these methods. So I'm just going to paste them in and you can either pause the video and copy them, or you can get them from my demo project in the next lecture and copy and paste them if you like. But these are once again, just methods to set up the whole Facebook process and mostly about connecting Facebook with um, either Safari or the Facebook app so that we can load our app after the Facebook authentication has taken place. All right, now we're dangerously close to actually getting this thing working. So let's jump over to viewcontroller.swift and this is where we're going to actually write our Facebook login code and we'll do it here in view did load. So we start with creating a variable called permissions, which is going to be an array which details what we want to get from the Facebook user account. So we're going to go for just the basic, which is public profile. There are a lot more options you can get from here. So you can get their email address, for example, you could even get a friends list, um, all sorts of information if you want. But of course, the more you ask for, the less likely the user is to give you that permission. So I'd always ask for as little as possible to get your app working. And then we use PF Facebook utils and login in background with read permissions. So we don't want published permissions. We're not trying to write anything to their wall or anything like that, which generally isn't quite that popular with Facebook users, but we definitely do want the one with a block. There we go. I'm just thinking I should definitely import FB SDK cork it as well. So we've got everything imported here. Um, then we're going to set the permissions to the permissions variable that we just created there. And then the block sadly doesn't auto expand for me. So we're going to have to create that manually. So just put in a pair of curly brackets. And then the variables we're expecting here are user, which will be a PF user. And of course, an optional because we don't know whether it's going to be successful or not. And then error, which is going to be an NS error. And again, optional because we don't know whether it's going to have an error or not. We're not returning anything here. So void and then we're using those variables in this chunk of code here. So I'm going to start by looking to see if there's an error message. 
So if let error is error, and what I'll do is just print error, else if let user equal user. So if the user exists, then for now we'll just print user. And that's all the code that we need to make our Facebook login happen. There's a couple of things we need to do in our Facebook account before this will all work. And the first is to put in our bundle identifier. So I'm just going to change the bundle identifier to something from something generic to something more specific. So I'll use my usual appfish and then dot tinder. Then I'm going to copy that and go back over to our Facebook quick start and then scroll down and there's our box for our bundle identifier. So I'm just going to copy that straight in and then click next. We don't want to do any of that so that's all fine and we're done. Of course we're not quite done. We need to go over to my apps and change a couple of settings within the app. So I've just tapped on Tinder 2 there. And the first is to add a contact email. So I'll just use my standard Rob Percival at cantab.net and then save that. And the reason we need that is because to enable us to be able to log in with various Facebook accounts, we need to make this app available to the general public. Now, don't worry, this doesn't mean that thousands of people are going to sign up to your app. It just means that anyone can sign up to your app if they want to, but it won't be on the Facebook App Store or, of course, on the iTunes App Store or anything like that. So you don't need to worry about a bunch of people trying to use your app at this point. And you can see those are a couple of other permissions. So we've only asked for a public profile, but we could ask for email and a friends list if we wanted as well. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, was it? We're now in a position to give this a shot. So let's run our app. And with any luck, we should find that we're able to log in via Facebook. So here we go. It's flipped over to Facebook already. And there we go. I'm already logged in in Facebook in mobile Safari. If you're not, you'll probably need to log in there. But there's your Facebook login screen. And then we just tap OK. And it should jump straight back to our app. There we go. And just before we run that, there is a quick change I need to make to the syntax here. I just need to change permissions as being the only option there and then just have the block displaying that way. Okay, so now after just a few lines of code and a fair bit of tweaking, we should find that the app now automatically, there we go, you can see it's redirected to mobile Safari and the Facebook site. So I'm going to log in with the same Facebook account that I set the app up with. You don't have to because we made it public, but it's probably easier to keep it all together if you do. And then I'm just going to long press to paste my password in. Click login. And there we go. So now you can see your app name is here and it's going to receive public profile. That's fine. So tap OK. And there we go. You can see the username has been passed or has been created by pass and then passed back to the app. And if we just jump back over to our pass data store and refresh that, we should now find that we've got a new user who is our Facebook user. And there he is. Fantastic. You can see we've got information about Facebook in the auth data there. Brilliant. So that's our basic Facebook login system. We'll see later on how to get some of the information from the Facebook 
account so we can get the first name, surname, an image which is going to be very useful for us and a little bit more information as well using this public profile permission. But in the next video I'm going to give you a quick break from hardcore Facebook pass coding and we're going to see how to create the swipe left, swipe right user interaction that was so important to Tinder and has been copied so many times since. We'll do that in the next video. I'll see you there.